be presenting on the emotional carryover effect on memory, comparing slow-paced breathing, fast-paced breathing, and breathing normally. I'm Anna Capeless. I'm Margaret McLeod. I'm Kate Wachowski. I'm Mary J. Meyer. I'm Brody Taylor. I'm Abigail Keeman. And I'm Kate Whitlatch. Imagine you're a second semester <laughs> junior and you just received a failing grade on your exam after failing all three tests prior. You had to do good on this one. Your heart is pounding, you feel sweat in the palm of your hands, but you must make it to your next class to learn the information for a psychology exam coming up. When you go back to your room later that day and begin to study, you realize you vividly remember both receiving the bad grade and the information from the psychology class. This is called the emotional carryover effect. The emotional carryover effect it caused, is caused by emotional arousal and increased physiological responses, including fast breathing, increased heart rate, and increased sweating. In response, your memory for future information becomes enhanced. We do not always want to vividly remember specific traumatic events or continue to have high levels of arousal after experiencing a traumatic event. And to reduce this response, you can try to calm down your arousal or distract yourself. Slow-paced breathing is characterized as breathing at a rate of six breaths per minute, which puts your breathing in the same resonant frequency as your heart. Slow-paced breathing causes a decrease in arousal responses and increases distraction by attending to the rate of your breath. Fast-paced breathing is characterized as breathing at a faster rate than regular breathing. Fast-paced breathing causes an increase in arousal responses and an increase in distraction by attending to the rate of your breath. We wanted to understand the effects of slow-paced breathing on the emotional carryover effect by comparing slow-paced breathing, fast-paced breathing, and breathing normally while viewing neutral images after a presentation of emotional images. And now for the methods. All right, so following the arrival of each of our 177 participants, each were fitted with electrodes on their non-dominant hand and their torso so that we could record their skin conductivity levels or their sweat and their heart rate variability. We, were also, we also fitted them with a respiration belt around their chest to record their breathing. So we divided each of our participants into one of four groups. This first group viewed both emotional and neutral images with rest blocks at the end and the beginning of block one. This group followed normal pace breathing during the neutral block two images. This second group followed slow pace breathing and this third group followed fast pace breathing. This final group was our control as they only viewed neutral images while following normal pace breathing during the second neutral block. So then four hours following the initiation of session one, participants returned and they took a recognition memory test where they would determine if they could remember or not remember a set of new and old images. So now we're gonna do a demonstration so that you can better understand what we mean by these breathing tones. And you'll see this line on the left side of the screen rise indicating to take a breath in and fall indicating to take a breath out. So just feel free to pull along. Which one of our which one our participants liked better? Um, <laughs> the fast breathing can get a little bit tricky. Um, so we analyzed all this respiration rate data during the second block, and luckily, luckily we did find that on average participants followed these tones. So now for the hypothesis. We hypothesized that if arousal decreased, so would memory. Compared to participants who viewed neutral images after emotional images during normal pace breathing, we hypothesized that when participants viewed neutral images after emotional images during slow pace breathing, there would be a decrease in memory arousal in the second block. 
Next, we hypothesize that when participants viewed neutral images after emotional images with fast-paced breathing, they would be an increase in memory arousal in the second block. Lastly, we hypothesize that when participants viewed neutral images after neutral images with normal-paced breathing, there would be a decrease in memory arousal in the second block. So, if distraction matters instead of decreased arousal, then memory would be decreased for all groups because all groups had a distraction, which was the breathing pacer. So, for our results, first we looked at memory. Um, on the x-axis, we have the block 1 and block 2, and on the y-axis, we have memory accuracy, which was shown by hits and false alarms. Um, so overall, memory was increased for block 1 as opposed to block 2, and also overall, we found that participants remembered more of the emotional images rather than the control images. Um, one reason for this might be that all participants where their breathing was paced in block two and not block one. Um, so that could have served as a distraction for them, which um, supports our alternative hypothesis that attention matters more than the emotional arousal. For our next results in skin conductance level, uh, we have found here the, uh, four different uh, breathing groups and on the y-axis we have essentially just the skin conductance level, in which case we're measuring the sweat of the person's fingers throughout the experiment. Uh, what we found was that the fast-paced breathing group had the highest skin conductance rather level than the slow-paced breathing group throughout the entire experiment. We expected to find this result for block two, but we also found this result surprisingly for block one. And for our last result, we looked at heart rate variability across participants. And so a way that we used to quantify this was by looking at the root mean successive square of differences, which is what the R of SSD is up top. And we chose this specific variable because it directly correlates to vagus nerve activity, which is your body's way of connecting to the parasympathetic nervous system, which is responsible for decreased arousal and your rest and digest system as most people see it. So on our um, y axis we have the heart rate variability, and then on our um, x axis we have the four different breathing groups. And so for this, the most important result that we saw was that for the fast paced breathing, we have the lowest heart rate variability, which indicates they had the highest arousal levels. So to further analyze all the results that you just heard, because I know it was a lot, um, and give context as to why we think we got these results, when looking at memory, we found that across the board, the first block was remembered better overall compared to the second, regardless of if it was emotional or neutral. And like previously stated, we believe that this was because every single group for block two had the pace breathing. Even if it was the normal pace, they were all following the pacers. And we believe that this served as a distraction, so rather than a decrease in arousal, the presence of the breathing pacer acted as a distraction, which produced the memory. The second thing we looked at was skin conductance, and like Brody said, we found that slow-paced breathing had the lowest skin conductance level, and fast-paced breathing had the highest skin conductance level. While we did expect this, we also only expected it for block two. However, we did see it for both block one and block two. And we believe that this is potentially due to the fact that participants partook in a practice breathing um, before block one ever began. Um, so this could potentially have influenced uh, the results in block one and block two. And the last thing we looked at was the heart rate variability, where fast-paced breathing had the lowest heart rate variability. Now this one can initially sound a little bit confusing, um, however, high heart rate variability is actually a very good thing, because it means that you are better able to adapt to your environment quickly. Um, so this would make sense that the fast-paced breathing had the lowest heart rate variability. All right, thank you, and we will take questions now. <laughs> um, how did y'all acquire the participants, and were any like removed or disqualified? Yeah, so we actually had. Um, it was that was one of the most difficult parts of this study. Um, we acquired participants predominantly at Wofford. They first filled out a survey to see if they were eligible. Um, and then 
we went through and found those who were in fact eligible. There were quite a bit of regulations though, um, because participants could not smoke or use nicotine products. They also could not have any psychological disorders, and some participants were excluded due to being on like certain heart medications. Um, you also could not exercise 24 hours prior, drink 24 hours prior, eat two hours prior. Um, and it was a relatively large time commitment compared to some other studies. So it was rather difficult to acquire enough participants. Got a question today? Um, what were some of the examples of the emotional um, <laughs> well, we had, it, I mean, they were bad. They were pretty bad. We got them from a, um, a, a standardized database of um, really emotional, horrible images. I mean, like a car crash victim, maybe. They're, they're pretty brutal. Um, I don't know if there are any participants here in this room, but we can attest that they're pretty bad. Yeah. <laughs> <laughs> I think there was another question here. Um, I was going to ask, so you said that um, part of the reason why there was um, increased skin conductance in the first block, um, which you weren't expecting to see, was um, potentially due to the practice of the pace breach before <coughs> the block had ever begun. Um, do you guys have any like thoughts about possible solutions for teaching them how to do the slow pace breathing, but like in a time where it's not going to affect how they do on the blocks or anything like that? My initial reaction when we got these results was, which again, it would increase the time commitment, which is really hard. You know, everyone at Wofford is busy, all the students are busy. But to teach them like a few days before, so that way the effects might have not like lasted as long. But then again, in a lot of the literature that we've read to prepare and kind of like format this study, even one session of slow paced breathing can result in like long term effects. So it's kind of something that future research is just going to have to like really dive into and work around if that was the case for these results. I think they answered it already. That was it. <laughs> Any other questions for this group? All right. Nice to meet you.